If you've ever wondered how rich and how nutritious your soil is for your, your garden or for your flower beds, uh, there's a real easy way to uh, test your soil and find out how much nutrient there is and a couple other tests that we can do that will show you what the consistency of your soil is and you can find out actually what's in there. So uh, here at Anderson Seed and Garden, we've got uh, soil test kits that we can show you how to test your soil for pH, so whether your soil's alkaline or acidic, and it also will test for all the major nutrients, so nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium as well too. And we're gonna do one of those tests, we'll show you how to do it, but the easiest test you can do to find out how much clay, how much silt, how much sand you've got in your soil is to do a jar test. Now what you do is you take some of your garden soil and you fill up your jar about halfway with garden soil, and then you fill it up the rest of the way with water. So you got about half and half water, half soil. Shake it up like crazy so it separates the soil and it mixes it completely with the water and then let it sit for about uh, 24 to 48 hours and then the soil will all settle down to the bottom and what you're going to have is, is from that mixture, your heaviest particles are going to drop to the bottom first, so your sand will show up in the bottom first. Then the next smallest particle, which is silt, will gradually accumulate on top of the sand, and then your clay particles, which are the smallest and the lightest, which kind of stay in suspension a little bit longer, they'll gradually precipitate out and, and land on top. And you can see what your, your, your proportions of sand, silt, and clay are in your soil. In this particular sample I took out of my garden, and uh, my garden has, happens to have a lot of clay in it, so there's, there's quite a bit of clay. You can see a little bit of silt and a little bit of sand down there in the bottom, but it's, it's, it's mostly clay. So it's really interesting to see how those particles you know, fall out of the solution. And, uh, and really, you should have about 30 to 40% sand and uh, you know, probably 30 to 40% silt and maybe 20 to 30% clay in your soil if you've got really great soil. Otherwise, we can adjust and uh, add a lot of organic matter to it if you've got a lot of clay, uh, definitely want to add a lot of organic matter to it if you've got a lot of sand. So it just depends on, on uh, where your garden is, where your property is, and, and the soil that you're doing. But uh, a jar test like that, really easy to do. What I've also done is we've taken the same soil and uh, put it in a little bit larger jar, put in one part soil to five parts water and did the same thing. Shook it up really well, let it all settle out. And then we've got water up here on the top that actually has the nutrient in it and we're gonna be able to test that water. So I've got a couple testers right here. We're not gonna do all of them right now, but uh, we can test with this one, pH. Then we've got potassium, nitrogen, and phosphorus. And basically what we're gonna do is we're gonna take these containers and we can use the same, this same water that we, uh, that we mixed up earlier. And I'm gonna fill this up with just water. And then each test has a little tablet, but it's a, it's a capsule. And uh, there's a the chemical inside the capsule. You break the capsule open and just pour it inside. And we're just gonna do the pH and the nitrogen because those, uh, those are some fairly important tests. So make sure you get all the, all the powder in there. We'll put the lid back on and shake it up. And then depending on what the color of the water is, and it'll take, it'll take a few minutes for it to change color, but uh, depending on what the color of the water is, then we'll be able to tell what the pH of our soil is. So let's do that one. Let's do a nitrogen too. It's always fun to test for nitrogen. <clears throat> nitrogen, um, breaks down during the winter time as uh, you add organic matter, like say you put uh, compost into your garden in the fall or you added leaves and grass clippings. Uh, you've got to add nitrogen in the fall to, to really get that material to break down over the winter time because all the microbes and microorganisms in the soil will actually break that material down. They, they use nitrogen to make that happen. So you can actually deplete your nitrogen uh, from your soil by adding a lot of organic matter. So if you don't add a lot of nitrogen back into the soil, then you're gonna be nitrogen depleted. In many cases, uh, most people's gardens are nitrogen depleted when, uh, when they start growing in the springtime. That's why it's so important to fertilize in the spring because uh, your nitrogen's kind of dissipated through the winter time. So make sure we get that all in there. All right, so we'll shake this one up too. Shake that one up really good. And then we're gonna let them sit here for just a minute. 
and then uh, we'll see how our test works out and see how much nitrogen is in the soil that we tested and we'll find out how much uh, how high or how low the pH is as well. Looks like our test has had enough time to, to uh, show some results. So right here on, on my left, we've got uh, the pH. And if you can see how green the water has, has changed color, uh, your, your color code is, is right down the center there. And uh, the darker the green, the higher the pH is. So it looks like our pH is about seven and a half on that scale. And that's pretty normal for around here. We'd like our pH to maybe be a little bit lower. If it were closer to seven, that would be even better. But a pH of seven and a half is not too bad. Uh, vegetables will grow great in a pH from about six up to about eight. So really it's not a problem. But looking at our nitrogen test right here, the, the water hasn't changed color at all. In fact, there's, there's hardly any purple or pink even showing up. So that's, that's telling us that there's very little nitrogen, if any, in the soil. And that probably has a lot to do with the amount of uh, organic matter that I put into the garden last fall. I did fertilize it really heavily with nitrogen, but that nitrogen is all broken down through the winter time to, to, to break that, that, that organic matter down and no longer is there any nitrogen in the soil. So I'll have to amend the soil uh, this, this spring. So uh, using a soil test like this will give you a, a lot of information about your soil. So not only can you figure out if you need to add a lot of organic matter because you've got a high clay content or a lot of sand, which uh, it's probably a good idea to do every year. We should be adding to our soil every year. But it'll also tell you what nutrients there. And uh, certain plants need certain nutrients. So if we're lacking nitrogen, your corn's going to be short, the ears aren't going to fill out, and your plants just aren't going to grow very well. If you're low on, on phosphorus or potassium, uh, your plants aren't going to flower as much, and they're, they're, they're not going to produce as much root system, and they're not going to produce as many fruits. So uh, it's important to know how much nutrient is in your soil so you can add the right type of fertilizer fertilizer to uh, really make your plants respond and give you what you're looking for. So uh, using a soil test can really be very helpful and very beneficial to find out what's going on in your soil. Help us figure out what kind of nutrient, what kind of organic matter, what kind of soil amendments we need to put into our soil to really be successful with our garden this coming year. Mm -hmm.